Hello, take 4,000 of Chemistry of Life, part two. Uh, it's not really 4,000, but it is take six. <laughs> and so hopefully this is going to work out this time. All right, so let's pick it up, pull out your notes, the 2.1 notes, dust them off from a few weeks ago, and let's start talking about energy. Now, energy, we denote energy by the letter E. So that's how we tell we're talking about energy. There's two main types of energy we're going to talk about, potential and kinetic energy. Now, think about potential energy when, um, think about it in terms of like people. When you hear people say, oh, they have so much potential, that means they haven't done it yet. They just have the ability to do it. So potential energy is stored energy. It's just sitting there waiting to be used. And it's stored in the bonds, in the chemical bonds. All right. Kinetic energy is the energy of movement, of motion. And so kinetic energy is where, um, when those bonds are broken and that energy is released. So the energy is actually from the movement of the electrons. So when the electrons are stuck in that bond, it's potential energy. And when those bonds are broken, then the energy is released. Whoops, moving on. All right. Now, the potential or the stored energy here is um, the energy, like I said, in the bond. So here is one formula where you can, or one, one depiction, the structural formula. <clears throat> That line here is telling you that that's a bond, and we're talking about two different, um, we're talking about two different um, uh, electrons. So that would be represented by two electrons right there. Okay, I'm not sure why that's not showing that. There we go. So the two electrons, or we could have, um, uh, or we could have the uh, whoa, whoops. Uh, discard the annotation. There we go. Um, or we could show it in this way the sh with the sharing of electrons. All right, so potential is stored energy and kinetic energy is energy in motion. It's the bonds have been broken. So this cloud out here, remember we said that the um, in the nucleus are the positively charged protons. The neutrally charged, there's no, no charge, so it's neutral. Neutrons, those are in the nucleus, and then the negatively charged electrons are out here <clears throat> in the cloud. All right, there's some things that you need to know about the periodic table in order to be able to um, have a little bit better understanding. All right, so atomic mass, if you recall from before, the atomic mass is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So atomic mass is protons plus neutrons, okay? And the atomic number is the number of protons. All right, so atomic mass is listed underneath, typically, underneath the element. Like in the case of carbon, its atomic mass is 12 point something, something, something. And then the atomic number, in this case, is shown on the upper left hand corner. It depends on the periodic table. Sometimes it's above the element, but, um, but it is in, um, uh, it's, it's definitely, it stands out, so you know, okay? So the period, so these lines across, like that green line, all of those elements are from the same period. And these are of the same period. And as you move along the period, there's different qualities that that element has. So an easy way to remember the periods is that when you read a sentence, you read it horizontally and it ends with a period. Oh, isn't that great? That's such a great way to remember it. Because then you move to the columns. You move to these vertical um, areas here, and those are called columns. Now. An individual column is called a family. So like here you have the boron family and the carbon family, nitrogen family, oxygen family, halogen family, noble gas family. All these here in the center are the transition metal families. And then we have the alkali earth metal families and the alkali metal families. And those all have very distinctive traits to those elements. 
All right, let's talk some bonding, all right? Now, there's three main types, there's more than three types of bonding, but the three types that we're gonna discuss are covalent, ionic, and hydrogen. Think of the word co, um, or the prefix co. Co means together. And so, in a covalent bond, they, these um, molecules are gonna share electrons. Remember, they want two in their first shell, three in their sec, I mean, uh, eight in their second shell, eight more in their next shell, in order to be happy. They want that outer shell full in order to be happy. So carbon has an atomic number of six, which means it has six protons. Well, in a neutral atom, protons equal electrons. So it, with six protons, it's gonna have six electrons. So it fills up the first shell of two, fills up the second shell, but it only has four out there. Carbon is not happy at that point. Now hydrogen's not happy either because hydrogen's atomic number is one. Can't do a whole lot with that. And so, and it wants to have two. So this hydrogen came in and covalently bonded to this carbon. Now this hydrogen's happy. It's got two in its outer shell, but carbon's still not happy with only one hydrogen. So it's gonna bond three more hydrogens in order to be happy. So this is what it looks like on an electrode um, type format, and this is what it looks like in a molecular format. All right, now there's a particular type of covalent bond called a polar covalent bond. Think of poles, um, the north and south pole of a magnet. They have opposite charges. Or think about the north and south pole itself. They're on opposite sides of the Earth. So a polar molecule means that it has, it's a charged molecule. A nonpolar means it does not have any charges. Important part, uh, important point to make. All right, now, this little squiggle here, it looks like a, like a S, um, that denotes partial. That means it's got a partial charge. So this is a partial negative charge. So oxygen has a partial negative charge. Hydrogen has a partial positive charge. All right, so still covalently bonded, but it's got a um, partial charges, so it's a polar covalent bond. All right, now, like I said, this is the structural formula. So when we see it with its bonds in here, that's called the structural formula. When we see it written like this, it's called the molecular formula. And so that is methane gas, and that's CH4. And you'll also hear that called the chemical formula as well. And that's just showing that there's one atom of carbon, four atoms of hydrogen. All right, the second type of bonding that we'll look at is called ionic bonding. And notice within that word ionic, there's the word ion. And we talked about ions before. We were talking about sodium ions and chloride ions. So we said sodium uh, the first shell has two. The second shell is full with eight, but sodium has 11 protons. So that means it's gonna have 11 electrons. Well, fills up two in the first shell, eight in the second. That only leaves one in the outer shell. It's not happy. It's way easier for it to donate that. So it donates that electron. In this case, it gives it over to chlorine because chlorine is missing one electron in its outer shell. So that makes both of these very happy. But notice this has a plus and this has a minus now. That's because sodium has 11 pluses, okay? So it has 11 positives. Now it only has 10 negatives. If we added those together, we end up with one more positive than we have negative. Thus, we get Na+. Plus. Same thing with the chloride ions. We have one more electron over here than we have protons, and so we end up with a positive charge. I'm sorry, a negative charge, because we have more electrons than we have protons. All right, and here's just uh, showing you the ionic compound, the structure of salt. It forms this crystalline structure and how they all interlink together there. 
All right, the third type of bonding we're going to talk about is a hydrogen bond. And a hydrogen bond is extremely important. This is the um, the bonding that, um, the notice here, the hydrogen is bonded to the nitrogen. Hydrogen bonds are weak bonds. This is real important when we're talking um, and when we look at the properties of water coming up. That's a, a hydrogen bond that occurs there. And we're going to see why that's real important. All right, some things to know about chemical reactions. On this side of the arrow, those are called the reactants. Those are like the ingredients in a recipe. Over here are the products. Think about that. The product is what you end up getting. So on this side of the arrow where this is pointing to, now don't be confused because sometimes you don't, it, it, you don't always have two over here and one over here. You could have one over here and then it breaks down into two over here or you could have all different kind of reactions. Just think arrow. And this side of the arrow are reactants. This side of the arrow are products. Oh, that's all we have. Oh, so sad to go. But I have three more videos to record tonight. So I will talk to you in just a few minutes. All right, have a great night. Thanks for tuning in.